fuel duty could increase by a staggering 12p a litre, sending the cost of petrol and diesel soaring within months. The huge 23% increase, which would be the first time fuel duty will have gone up since... It would be the first time fuel duty has gone up since 2011. It could kick in from the end of March next year, according to official documents, despite raising a potential £5.7 billion for the Treasury, the mammoth move was not even mentioned by the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, in the House of Commons yesterday. Not a word was said about fuel duty. Instead, the proposal was buried in papers released by the Office for Budget Responsibility alongside yesterday's budget. Liam Halligan, who spotted the fuel duty increase in the official autumn statement documents and broke the story in TV News, is still with me. But first I'm going to talk to Howard Cox, who's the founder of Fair, the Fair Fuel UK campaign, who joins us now. Howard, good afternoon to you. Hello, Andrew. Nice to speak to you. It's infuriating, isn't it? He got through an hour-long speech and didn't use those two words, fuel duty. Well, it's the most dishonest budget, or, or, or whatever you want to call it, an autumn statement I've ever seen. It was ridiculous. And thank you to Liam Halligan, who, who called me virtually immediately. It was announced at the OBR press conference uh, that this ridiculous 23% uh, increase in fuel duty. And don't forget, yes, that's 12p, but VAT goes on top of that makes it 15p. So the average family car will have to pay an extra eight to nine pounds to fill up their car in a time of a cost of living crisis when all of the other problems are hitting us. And I'm absolutely infuriated. The good news is that we managed to get a lot of MPs on board and Jonathan Gullis, MP for Stoke-on-Trent North, put together a letter. I wrote the letter and he put it together and sent it to Jeremy Hunt, who and we insisted on clarification. And we've got loads of big MPs, Brandon Lewis, uh, uh, Graham Brady, Pretty Patel, loads of MPs actually jumping on board and saying, what the hell is going on? Because they're not going to vote for that. Liam Halligan, I mean, well done you on spotting that. Um, the, does, the Chancellor is on the defensive today because of your story. And he's saying, I haven't decided yet whether to increase fuel duty in the, in the spring budget. Have you ever known a chance to get through uh, an entire budget statement without talking about fuel duty? I haven't. It's a great totemic issue. Uh, uh, it, it is, definitely, particularly at a time of high inflation, when a lot of the inflation is being driven by fuel costs anyway. Yeah. And at, particularly at a time when the Conservative Party is under a lot of scrutiny for its adherence to the so-called net zero policies, and a lot of ordinary folk... Ordinary voters are saying, hang about, for me, my car isn't a luxury. I live in the countryside mm. or I drive a van for a living. You know, many of us have to drive mm. our cars and vans literally to make ends meet, to have any kind of life at all. And this was buried in the OBR documents. It's <laughs> the planned 23% increase in fuel duty in late March 2023, wrote the OBR, which adds 5.7 billion to receipts next year. That's what they say. It's expected to raise the price of petrol and diesel by around 12 pence per litre. Well, what, now, would, well, what would that do to inflation figures, let alone people won't be able to afford to fill up the car? Well, it's, uh, what would it do to you know, the Conservative Party? There'll be <laughs> absolute convulsions. Uh, what would this do to the white man van vote? It, How would this go down in it, the Red Wall? So the Treasury's obviously on the defensive. You know, my phone was red hot with bet. people from Whitehall who ignore me most of the time and never return my <laughs> recalls. Suddenly they wanted to talk to me. And Jeremy Hunt was asked about this earlier today. Let me clear up. This is not government policy, uh, said the Chancellor. We'll make a decision on that at the next budget in the spring. Yeah, this was just an assumption the OBR made. Yet, yet, Andrew, it's an assumption that OBR made, which means the revenue is in the numbers. Exactly. The revenue is in... That's all we can assume, given that and the OBR have put it in their documents. And he didn't rule it out. He didn't rule it out. Howard Cox, what say you to that? Well, Liam is spot on about this. That They knew about these numbers, the Treasury. The, the, the Chancellor knew about these numbers. It was printed. It was ready to go. It was handed out at the press conference. He knew about it. And I've been told by a Treasury insider, a very reliable senior Treasury insider, who said, yes, it's true, Jeremy Hunt knew about that fact that where there was... A, and the word which is really operative in this sort of thing, uh, in that statement, is a planned rise, uh, Liam. That's the thing, planned. Now, we knew the 5P cut this year was going to be maybe put back on. Uh, that was the promise from Rishi Sunak last year when he reduced it, which didn't touch the sides, as you know. But this is a 12P plus VAT, and I say it again, 15 to 16 pence increase at the pumps. This will be crippling the economy, economy and it will cripple the Conservatives any chance of winning a general election.
That's Howard Cox, founder of Fairview UK. Liam, just finally... Just in the interest of fairness, let yeah. me reiterate again. Yeah. I, I, I'm, a re I'm a reporter. I read the technical yeah. documents. I yeah. take them seriously. I take OBR assumptions very seriously because they generate the growth forecasts and the inflation forecasts upon which taxes are now being raised and spending is being slowed. But as far as the government is concerned, to reiterate, in fairness, Jeremy Hunt says this is not government policy. Let me clear up this. We will make a decision on in, at the next budget in the spring on fuel duty. That was just an assumption that the OBR made. I would say, Chancellor, these OBR assumptions, they're very, very important because they drive the numbers upon which you make policy, mm. which affects all of us. And I say yet again, he could have said, I'm not doing it. He certainly could.